All right, it's uh, really late today. It's about just uh, about a quarter after five. I got here late because I had a, a lot of stuff to do today, and uh, I got the board underneath the uh, clay. I put extensions to match this board, um, and so I've got free reign to uh, make the base any shape I want other than the round base it is now. And I'm going to remove the dog right now. And, and the dog is the right size. Um, I was doing some research today on the anatomy of uh, and confirmation of border collies. And they were about 22 inches at the height, uh, the highest part of their their back, which is just above the knee. And if you remember, I took a, a measurement from here to the knee, and uh, that's how I came up with the measurement for him. But right now I need to prepare the base for the dog, because I'm going to put the dog right up against his uh, robe. But right now I need to cut away some of this base so I can... It's really been a nice day outside. It's uh, been in the 40s today, which is really nice for Montana. All right, let's see if I can make a board. And uh, I can't remember what my measurement was yesterday. Get that out of the way. Okay, I've uh, cut a piece of wood. It's almost the height of uh, the base, but I'm going to be bringing the base up anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, it was because if I didn't, I couldn't get the dog close enough, and it would make too much of a base. So I cut that angle to uh, fit the board right in there, and then I can get the dog a lot closer to the uh, figure. And all I have to do is just... Uh, adjust it until he's just touching. I don't want him, you know, burying his body in the uh, robe, but I want the body to just touch the robe so that uh, we get a point of contact which will help support the whole thing. So, so you know, I want to keep that up for a minute. All right, I want to bring the paw just about level with the uh, base right there. So what I want to do now, get my handy dandy little screw container, get some one inch screws, four of them, one for each leg and you'll see why in a second. I'm going to uh, Use the drill to put that leg down in the hole. I mean, to uh, anchor it in the hole. There we go. Good. Now I'll do the same thing on this side. All right, I've got the uh, dog lined up. Pretty darn good, I think. And uh, I think I'm gonna draw out his shoulder or uh, elbows out just a little bit. I think it looks good. It's gonna go well with the design of the piece. And uh, so now I guess the thing to do is get this guy off here and start working on the dog by itself. Now you see why I buy ready-made... Now you see why I buy ready-made armatures when I can, because the time involved of just making this simple little dog armature is time that I have saved if they had a 
dog armature to work with. Okay. I'm going to cut that off right there. So that I got a place to tape it. Alright, let's get this out. Start the electrical tape first. Now I just go up and wrap it around. And uh, that's just so that I've got it anchored on his back and it won't be moving up or down. And uh, do the same. People ask me what happens to the uh, support when they make a casting in bronze and do they uh, cut it off or what do they do? Well, they might cut it off because it's just wood and they can just clip it off easy. But more than likely, what they'll do is uh, make a mold of the whole thing with the armature in it and uh, when they make the wax copy, that part of that armature will come out in it, but all they'll do in, in the wax stage is just cut it off at the bottom of the, of the uh, belly of the uh, animal or the figure, like on the, uh, the Indian himself. He's got that uh, big uh, metal uh, thing going into his back, and what they'll do is they'll just uh, cut that off in the wax stage as well, just the same way they will on this one. Alright, let's start putting clay on this thing. I'm just not going to get any detail, but I'm going to at least uh, get the clay started. Get my tools out of the way first. And I want to wipe off the base. You know, even at the years that I've been doing this, since 1965, it's uh, still scary to do something you haven't done in a long time. The last time I did a dog sculpture, uh, I was commissioned by Pat O'Connell in Lake Tahoe. Uh, Pat O'Connell is the uh, daughter of uh, Albert Hitchcock, and actually the only offspring of Albert Hitchcock. She, back in the 40s or 50s, she was actually in a couple of his movies, which I think is just amazing. Anyway, I got to know them over in Tahoe when I lived there back in the 80s and uh, went to several of her parties when she moved down to Grass Valley. She no longer lives there. I don't know where she lives right now. I haven't talked to Pat in a long time. Well, I think the last time I saw Pat was I was taking, drove her from Lake Tahoe down to uh, the uh, airport in Sacramento. She was going to fly for a doctor's appointment someplace many years ago. So it's been since the 80s since I have done a dog. So it's uh, a little scary. And I was scared then because I had never done a dog. And so uh, I did it and it I only took about a day and a half to do the damn dog. It was a couple of uh, laps of APSA and a West Highland Terrier. The only reason I'm putting this clay down at each foot is to establish the height of the paw and also to cover up the screw.
and I'm just checking to see how he looks on here. And uh, looks like I made the right height for the uh, clay that's on the base of here. And uh, I just may add, add some clay just to, you know, anyway, just uh, want to see how it looks. I still think he looks small, but it just, you know, I'll check tomorrow with uh, Todd Connor at his house. I go up there and take pictures of his dog and some of the details of uh, him. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, that's going to be it for tonight, and uh, see you guys tomorrow.